Hello! Today I'd like to share 10 bedroom tips on how to succeed in Cartel Tycoon that you might not be aware of. I hope you'll find them as useful as I have in mastering the game. When you construct a building, you can choose what level to build. It's not obvious, but you can skip building tiers and construct level 3 buildings without researching lower level buildings. You'll have to construct the university first and it costs 120,000 in legal money. That's a lot, but if you can, it's well worth going straight to level 3 because they're more productive and you avoid upgrade costs. Upgrades that you research for level 1 or level 2 buildings don't carry over to higher buildings, so it's a waste unless you can't research or upgrade to a higher level building for some reason. You'll have to make sure that you're safe enough from other gangs and authorities, but if you are, then you should definitely save up for the university and go straight to researching level 3 buildings instead of spending too much time on level 2. Anything you produce has to be shipped out before you get money. That means that no matter how much you produce, you can only sell as much as your ports or rare fields can handle. There's also a limit to how much dirty money you can launder per day. And on top of that, too much dirty money will stop your selling points from working. Having too many goods or too much dirty money will increase terror without giving you any benefit. So it's better to focus on streamlining your operations to produce just enough to keep your selling points and your money laundering working at peak capacity. Anything more than that is a waste and actually harmful to you. Most selling points require you to have lieutenants stationed there to unlock more slots to sell more goods. Those lieutenants are then unavailable until the ship or plane returns with the money. That means you can't use them if you get attacked or another emergency comes up. But not level 3 river ports. You can use all 5 slots without needing to station anybody there. They also allow you to sell illegal goods without penalty, so you'll never run into situations like in seaports where your goods are confiscated or cause terror. They cost 100,000 just for the upgrade to level 3, but you get your money back very quickly. If you use them right, river piers should form the backbone of your operations. You need to use containers to smuggle illegal goods through seaports or the airport, but you can also use them to sell more of a good than you otherwise could. Vegetables allow you to put 3 of any legal good in them, and coffee and most other legal goods allow you to have 5 of any legal good per container. Not only that, legal goods tend to have higher selling limits than illegal goods. So for example, level 3 real peers allow you to sell 24 dried cannabis per slot, but you can sell 36 coffee in the same slot, and you can store 5 dried cannabis per coffee. That means that you can sell 180 dried cannabis, or any other illegal good per slot, if you store it in coffee. If you use all 5 slots, that's 900 of any item in one shipment. You'll need workshops to pack the goods and that may slow you down. You might also run into situations where your selling points stop working because they have too much dirty money. But using containers is one way to make a lot of money in every shipment. You can send goods across multiple provinces using the one transport company, but that ties up those trucks for a long time. It's more effective to chain multiple warehouses and transport companies. Storage space in buildings is not global. Instead, you have limits by type of good, so adding a new type of good has no penalties. Use the cargo tab to specify which goods are transported between locations, and you can have specific supply chains that span multiple provinces, but without tying up your trucks. Quite often your farms and factories can produce more than your warehouses can handle, and you'll find that one of the big limiting factors is that trucks just can't move things around fast enough to keep up. The best solution to this is to have multiple warehouses, but specialize them for different parts of the manufacturing chain. For example, if you produce cocaine, you'll need to farm the coca, dry it at a drying rack, and turn it into cocaine at a lab. That's three steps to produce the final product. You'll find that you need a lot of farms to produce enough coca to keep the drying racks and labs working at peak efficiency. But they just aren't enough trucks, so make a warehouse that specializes just on collecting the coca and moving it to drying racks. Use the cargo tab to only allow raw coca and disable all links to anything other than coca farms and drying racks. This first warehouse will take coca from the farms and keep drying racks supplied with raw materials. Then have a second warehouse that only collects dried coca and cocaine, then remove any links to farms. This second warehouse will take the dried coca produced by drying racks and supply the labs. It will also take the finished cocaine and move it to our transport company if needed. You can fight other gangs that even take over cities by violence, but you can also play nice and get them on your side. Every couple has their own personality, and if you pay attention to what they say, you can respond in a way that they like. That will raise their relationship to you, 
and if you're on good terms to them, they won't attack you. Eventually, you can even absorb them peacefully. It's far more productive to ally than to fight. Lieutenants that lose loyalty can go rogue and cause you all manner of trouble. You can either keep raising their wages to keep them happy, or you can get rid of them. Sending them on suicide missions against enemies will get them killed, but it'll raise terror. You can assassinate them too, but that reduces the loyalty of all your other lieutenants. But there's another option that's not obvious. There's a prison in the Lost Grandes territory, and if you send a lieutenant there, the option will appear to surrender. That will put them into prison, where they're effectively out of the game, and as a bonus, you'll temporarily put law enforcement under control. If you choose to use dirty money, placing a building doesn't cost any money until it's physically taken to the building. Use this to your advantage to test the placement of buildings and the roads you need to connect them before you actually spend any money on construction. This is particularly useful when it comes to optimizing the placement of farms and chemical plants. There's a few ways to raise a population's loyalty. They usually involve spending legal tender or lieutenant activities like holding concerts. But you can also buy goods from villages or indigenous settlements and that will raise loyalty. That will give you goods that you can use, but it's also the only way to raise loyalty with dirty money. You usually have more dirty money than you can launder, so this is an indirect way to launder it. It's particularly useful for buying vegetables, coffee and other goods that you can then use as containers for illegal goods without having to manage another production chain. You're going to recruit a lot of people to your gang, but don't just promote willy-nilly because you can only have so many people at each level. Each lieutenant has abilities that they'll gain on promotion. Think about which of these abilities are useful to your gang and decide on the limit on how far you want to promote them. Then only promote those who will bring you new abilities and skills. If you run out of spaces at a rank, you can always send someone to prison to free up a slot. So that's 10 tips that I found very useful in playing this game. Now get out there and start shipping out cannabis to promote world peace. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.